Howdy, 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 all you cool cats and kittens. Welcome back to Stardew Valley. We're watching Alex get yoked, and he's apologizing to me. Um, He's growing as a person and as a person. <laughs> yes, in both ways. And I'm just going to stand and stare at him silently while he does his set. All right, now that that's over with, eat this fruit, Alex. It will make you go strong, grow strong. You're a growing football boy. <laughs> and you, you must your eat. football muscles. Oh, this happened before we started streaming. There's a giant stump now in the south. Um west corner of the map that you can apparently build back but since hardwood is such a rare commodity that might be one of our long-term goals rather than a short term yeah i don't know when we're gonna get to that probably after we unlock ginger island and upgrade our house howdy Susie moo welcome Berkeley, I have given out the last apricot and I need more. I have 213 in my pocket. Wow. Please take some. They're squishing each other. Yeah. The juice is running down my leg. You've got Napoleon Dynamite style <laughs> apricot pockets. Where are you at the moment? I am in our shed putting apricots in wine barrels. Excellent. Or kegs. Um, now I only have 208. Will that will that suit you? I think I might be able to squeak by with 208. We'll stretch okay. it and see how far it lasts. I, I see your light. Thank you. So I, last time we streamed, we unlocked this ability where if you hover over an item in your inventory, it will tell you how much that item is worth. And I, I love that. It's a great feature. I don't remember if it was just like a new part of the UI or if it was from one of those books that we read. I think it was from a book, if I'm remembering correctly. Nice. That is yeah, useful. I just, I just noticed that our money is at one, two, three, four, and then some other numbers. Make a wish. We need to sell. I wish for more money. Oh, wow. Jeff Bezos, is that you? <laughs> if Jeff Bezos... Oh, wait a second. I was going to say if Jeff Bezos had the ability to buy a golden clock from a wizard, then I would forgive his sins. But he did <laughs> use his money to build a giant clock in a mountain. Did he so actually? So I guess how different are we really? Yeah, it's like the size of a skyscraper built inside a mountain and it's meant to last i don't know like a thousand years or ten thousand years Something for what crazy. purpose um hubris obviously but the stated purpose is to get people to think about longer time scales <laughs> so you're saying that the instant gratification culture that amazon upholds is not what we should be doing and the well, clock Jeff is Bezos there. is upset that you are upset that you are starving and unable to get health insurance today he wants you to think about how great it is that he'll be able to fly to space tomorrow ah. you know like think at a longer time scale you're being selfish it's kind of wild to think that like proportionally well, no, I don't, that's not a statement I can make, but just Jeff Bezos exploring dangerous things probably will die in space accident. That one dude who explored the Titanic, also billionaire, died. Like, these billionaires are out here risking it all for experiences because I guess money can't buy you enough stuff to fill that hole. Yeah, it's wild. Um, hey, Jared, I've got super exciting news. Yes. 
I have the most exciting news. I got foraging level 10. <gasps> you I'm have taking made the it. botanist perk right now, which means forged items are always highest quality. You know what that means? No more of these mundane or silver or gold truffles. It is all purple all the time. That baby. is excellent. So that is going to be a huge boon in us. Uh, get more money. You are now so skilled labor. Would you like to renegotiate means... your contract as a hired hand on this farm? <laughs> yes, I would like um, two little houses instead of one. Ah, great. Yes. And one clock in a mountain, please. Uh, that might be a little harder. What about a golden clock from a wizard? Mm, sure, but okay. I want to help pay for it. Wait, <laughs> I might be bad not, at negotiating. That's not in your best interest here. Who are you to tell me my best interest? Jeff Bezos? I, I'm Everard. Um... <laughs> Uh, what's his name? Yeah, Everard Claire. The union boss from uh, Disco Elysium. The greasiest man in that <laughs> place. Martinez. Or Martinez? I can't remember. I would say Martinez. Yeah, but you're not like ambiguously French the way that Martinez is. True. I think that whole game is about dystopian Canada. I love that theory. <laughs> Susie Moo and Meg are here. Welcome. Welcome. I am sorry. I missed some of the chats at the beginning. I was having a hard time opening Twitch on my little side computer that I used to watch the chat. And you'll never guess what the solution was. I had to close Chrome and open it in Edge. So I'm, I don't like that. That's 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 a bummer for Chrome. Chrome has been mm -hmm. so ubiquitous for so long. I actually use Firefox at work usually. That's a fun fact about me. Firefox, My coworkers are also shocked by that. So. It, was it so it was supposed to be like the more private browser, but it probably isn't anymore. I mean, uh, marginally. I mean, Google owns Chrome and everything else and all the advertising revenue, you know, so they've got more incentive to spy on you than Firefox does. Um, okay, so I want to talk about forging level 10 a little more. So we've got the, the purple, purple star, iridium star, truffles all the time, so that's going to get us a ton of money. It also means that we can stop growing forageable items in the greenhouse and start replacing them all with, um, what are they called? Sweet gem berries and ancient fruit. Ah. So we'll have a lot more of that going around as well. This is this is just a great day for capitalism, cozy capitalism. Does this do anything for our wine making? I know we had to make some special wine. Um, it mostly means that uh, instead of like sometimes making ancient fruit wine and sometimes making apricot wine, we can just we can all probably get to a place where all ancient fruit, yeah. So okay, not faster, not rare, just higher value. Okay. Well, congratulations. Susie Moose says. Uh, oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Susie Moose says, at this point, I'm upset when I get bad ads because I know they're spying on me. Give me better ads. I totally relate to that. I, I got the weirdest Walmart ad the other day where uh, it seemed like they had just picked all of the products on their website that were not sex toys, but looked adjacent to sex toys <laughs> and <laughs> just put them in a collage. And that was the Walmart ad. Was, you need this and this and this. You can't use them the way they look, but at first glance, it'll make you take a second glance, which in hindsight was probably their goal. And now here I am talking about it. But you all knew about Walmart already, so what was the point? Yeah, I've, I've had some weird ones like Walmart crack pipe. Um, 
There was another one. I don't I don't remember where it was from, but it was like hard drug paraphernalia, essentially. <laughs> that is that is wild. Yeah. And that's always on Instagram for some reason. And a lot of my Instagram is like Chinese village life or um a dude who's polishing a rock until it looks like a mirror. You know, it's it, it's not like particularly strange stuff. So I want to be on your Instagram. Yeah, I, I mean, me too. It's it's, it's awesome. <laughs> Let's end the stream so that we can both go look at your Instagram. <laughs> the, the, this has been SB Tear. See you all next week. Megan in the chat says, "How dare you wake my husband from his slumber?" So I'm assuming you talked to Sebastian today. I did. I did talk nice. to Sebastian. I woke him up by smushing an apricot into his mouth. <laughs> oh, you should try the ear next time. It's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine that? And then your ear would I, probably smell like apricot all day. You know what? I'm currently imagining it as we speak, and I don't care for it. Me, I apologize for putting that either. out into the universe. The next time I visit you, I will bring an apricot. Will you? Will oh, you I forgot about this. Ear? We have unlocked the clothing therapy cutscene. <gasps> yeah. You're probably wondering, what is clothing therapy? I'll try to explain. So many of us are struggling with personal issues, things holding us back from living how we want. It's important to me that everyone has a free and happy life, so I came up with a new kind of therapy to help people achieve that. Are you licensed to practice therapy in this state, Emily? <laughs> Self-expression is a healing tool. Okay, cool. Behind this curtain, you'll find racks and racks of clothes. There's endless options to choose from. That curtain looks like it's covering about three feet of space. So Endless options, Jared. Okay. You just have to believe. Your job is simple. Find the outfit that truly speaks to you and put it on. Feel confident in yourself and your choice. You all have a unique style to share with the world. Shane, you're up first. This will cure your alcoholism. <laughs> Does she say that? No. Oh, she should. Ah, Jared, you're just in time. Just observe and keep an open mind. Okay. Shane has dressed like a glam rocker. Shane, you are no longer an alcoholic. Now you're struggling with a cocaine habit. Hey, it's moving up or down or sideways. <laughs> One of those. Now go outside with confidence and show the world. Shane says, sure. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, everyone gets a turn. Robin, let's see what you're going to do. Robin is laughing. Robin has dressed like Anne of Green Gables. Mm, nice. Let's see what Demetrius thinks. He's going to call you a specimen. <laughs> is Demetrius there? No. Mayor That's Lewis. Oh. oh, yeah. Well, yeah, he's he's not supportive. Mayor Lewis has dressed as the wizard. Or a pimp. I'm not, I'm not sure what that is. Okay, I think this is Purple Hair's Abigail. Am I right? Yeah. Okay. Abigail has dressed as Metal Bowser from Super Super Mario Smash <laughs> Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Clint. This is your chance to finally not be a nice guy. You're shaking like a leaf. Get in there, buddy. 
Also, Clint, if you shaved your goatee, people might get a better first impression of you. I'm not saying everybody should not have a goatee, but I am saying for you, it's not doing it. You have chosen to dress as Lieutenant Commander Riker from Star Trek The Next Generation. All right, where's my clothing, Emily? And Clint's back. All right. You have chosen to live the way you were living before, Clint. He can change metal, but can he change himself? No, because he's not metal enough. Hmm. Megan clarifies that Lewis is actually dressed as the governor, not as the wizard. Oh. Wishful, wishful thinking, Lewis. You'll never run this state. Only this city. Clint looks like a French bear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not the animal bear. The other kind. Gus, I know what you need, and it's an apricot. What are the odds? The odds is probably, yo. Ah, I've been neglecting Willy. And, of course, the wizard, Sandy, and the dwarf, and Krobus. How late does Krobus stay up? I think he is incapable of sleep. Relatable. Mm. You guys, I am so excited for us to go to bed and game and uh, for you to see how much money we made today. It is a little insane. We did happen to have a lot of wine get get ready today so that's part of it what's the what's the cycle on the wine is it a three-day thing or a one-day thing or how does that is work it seven days in game okay and the preserved jars are three days i don't remember for sure though okay so just since we're talking about wine my cousin gave me a kombucha, like, culture that she's mm. been using for a long time. And Berkeley hooked me up with a suggestion on where to start looking for a bottle to brew it in. And I wasn't sure if it was going to work because kombucha is supposed to be carbonated. But I did some reading and what you sent me, Berkeley, actually does allow enough pressure for the kombucha to carbonate. So it's... It's different than a lot of other kombucha brewing setups because this setup has a little like water seal that allows pressure to normalize to a certain extent um, without having to fully vent the jar. So it keeps the good bacteria that you want in, but it also prevents catastrophic pressure buildup, which was really cool. So thank you, Berkeley. And on a different, completely different note, that's a lot of money in just wine. 57000 Yeah. For the day. Let me just see how many days we have to do that to uh, get that golden clock. Dude, the truffles. Two, 200 days of that. That is many. 
we had 40,000 almost in just truffles today. That's wild. That's amazing. And that's going to happen every day that it doesn't rain and isn't winter. And in fact, we could double that if we buy another uh, pig barn, pig barn, which I think is the next thing we should do. Okay. Meg asks if we're aging our wine. We haven't unlocked a basement yet. We're still saving up hardwood for that. I'm a little worried that if we did have a basement, Clint would move into it right away. <laughs> that would be on brand. Oh, this is so sad that it's raining the day after our pigs become magic. And by our pigs becoming magic, I mean I, I become magic. My fingers turn the truffles magic. Whoa. That's, that's a big responsibility. I don't know. It is, I don't know but if I'm you should shoulder that. Okay. All right. I mean, I don't have a community center to worry about anymore, so I'm ready for the next next challenge. Would you like me to smelt some iridium bars? We have a ton of iridium that we're not using. I don't know what we would do with iridium bars since we don't use tools. They're worth eighteen thousand a pop. Holy Hannah. Yeah. <laughs> Great idea. <laughs> at least I think that's what it said. Let me look at that. Oh, I'm sorry. They're worth a thousand a pop. There was a stack of well, 18. <laughs> that's still <laughs> a lot. Bad. I'm going to see. This is, we've got two little burnt out looking ferns down here. Those yes. aren't saplings of anything, are they? They are. They're supposed to be hardwood, but they never grew. Oh, weird. Okay. Um, yeah. There's probably room for a barn right here, right? Yes. Okay. And I think we can get rid of this. I need to build some bombs in the game, NSA, um, so that I can clear a path to the old, to the magical woods. Because that's blocked off right now anyways. So yeah. let me build some bombs. I'll clear the land. And then we can buy ourselves a barn as a reward. Okay. I am looking up what you need to build a barn right now. Wood, stone, and gold. Maybe a lot of wood and stone and gold. Because we have to like build it and then upgrade it to the third level to get pigs. But I think... I think this is going to be worth it in the short and long run. Maybe not the short run. Not the super short run. Just the medium short run. Are you okay with that large investment? Absolutely. You gotta cool. spend money to make money. That's true. I learned that from Daddy Daycare. The film, the feature film. The film, yeah, not not an educational institution that I attended. I mean, you could, I like, you're the demographic now. You could. Yeah, I could start one. It wouldn't be as funny as the movie because I'm better at it than they are. But uh, <laughs> I'm sure there'd be some shenanigans. shoot i forgot that you have to buy the barn and then it takes three days to construct and then you pay for the upgrades this is quite a process yeah this would be simpler robin if you were willing to just build the fully upgraded barn from the start mm. okay do you think um right where you just dropped that bomb or do you think like up by the sprinklers i can fit it either place um I think if we do the sprinklers for now up here, and then we could build another one over here. <gasps> Two. Brilliant. Love it. 
Meg says, um, I'm sorry, can you build a fully upgraded barn in one day? I think not. She's doing her best. I think that she could build a good barn in like three or four days instead of building a bad barn in three days and then making it better in multiple iterations. Just do it right the first time, you know? Exactly. Once you've built, like, it's not like you have to redesign it. You know how to build it now. So choosing not to is just grift. Mm -hmm. And it's not like any of them obey the laws of physics. They're all bigger on the inside. And how hard is it to make it a little bigger and also pig safe? Probably not much. Susie says she needs the money. I, I would pay. I would pay more for this quick turnaround. Maybe what she really needs is time away from Demetrius. And that's why she insists on doing it this way. Understandable. Which, I mean, kick him to the curb and move in with us. That's right. You can just live on our farm and make barns all day. <laughs> Think about what Robin puts up with at home. A dingus husband, an emo son, and a daughter who makes robots that shock people. That last one is objectively cool. But, uh, yeah, other than that, she's got a rough deal. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Mario's going to get a job offer from Lockheed Martin mm -hmm. for, for, the, for the robot work. Okay, let's rank citizens of Stardew Valley by how likely they would be to work for Lockheed Martin. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, Shane? basically already did so yes 100 percent. okay um emily on the other hand i think is the opposite end of that Ooh, spectrum yeah. zero percent for emily the wizard is probably the ceo like out of all the people in this game besides i've Blanking out on the bad guy's name. Trojan Mart? Well, oh, you're talking about the... The actual dude. Um, like, he is the most responsible, but outside of him, I think the wizard is the most morally reprehensible person in the game because they have the power and ability to help everybody in the town, but they don't. They're content to mm. hang out in the woods and let the town rot. And I think that with, as Uncle Ben says, with great power comes great responsibility. And the wizard is not living up to it. So, wizard, you are the CEO of Lockheed Martin in my book. Maggie in the chat says she doesn't know what Lockheed Martin means and she doesn't want to know. Uh, doesn't care to know. Well, too bad. It's a defense <laughs> contracting company. They make weapons for money. Tony Stark was based off them, but like the bad Tony Stark before he turned good. Yes. Is that a good description? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that that's basically the gist of it. They're, they're one of like five main defense contractors for the United States military. I'm not saying that they bribe members of Congress to get into wars to make more, more weapons, to make more money. But if anyone would do that, they sure would have the strongest incentive to. That is definitely true. Not to mention, if they were able to convince the Congress people to invest in their company, then the Congress people would also be incentivized by nature Whoa. of their own ability to benefit. We are so close to cracking this whole thing open. Just kidding. That's it. That's the whole thing. Stay away from second floor windows. Yeah. I have come upon a, a nymph playing the flute in the woods. Oh, Abigail. Gamble says maybe the wizard is a magic poser. He can't really do anything meaningful. <laughs> I love that explanation for why he uh, doesn't help people. Wizard of Oz type wizard. He does feed you an earthy potion that gives you the ability to speak to the Junimos, but I th think that might be it. Does he have any other canonical powers? Yeah. 
I don't know the canon, but he seems to play a role in the Halloween festivities. Which are themselves pretty magical. Meg says, have you met a wizard? They're nerds and recluses and either are content to live in a library or get too ambitious that they develop huge major hubris and then get a bomb put in their chest, hypothetically. <laughs> that is a uh, Baldur's Gate subplot. The only wizard I've met lived in a tower outside of Trezar and was fairly hubristic. Didn't actually realize they were dead. Um and seemed like they were kind of a jerk to their underlings. That sounds like a really well thought out character in a yes. cool D and D campaign. Yes. It was that great. That would maybe be available on Spotify. Indeed, the tower at Trezar. Choose a choice. Also, I I remember you mentioning that you had like a second part potentially lined up, but we never did it. Would you care to pull back the curtain on what you had in mind, if you remember? Um, I am trying to remember. So the context there was that I ran it as like a three session arc for some friends and cousins that were interested in learning how to play. And then I ran just like the first sessions worth of that for you and Megan on the, on the podcast. <laughs> Megan says, I thought it sounded familiar, but didn't know why. <laughs> Cause you played through that story <laughs> twice. <laughs> um, I yeah so so in well I don't want to spoil it in case anyone wants to go listen to the podcast. Um. Perky, yeah, I've that... just learned that I'm a harpist. Sorry to interrupt. Ooh, are you playing with Abigail? I am. Nice. I I love that cutscene. It's so sweet. I romanced Abigail in my last or my second playthrough of this game. I like her. I like the music. It's cool. And a little bit wizardy. Anyways, what were you what were you gonna tell us about the tower at Trezar? That that wizard ended up being like a quest giver and sent them on missions into the woods to like figure out what was going on and why there's so much like necromantic energy in the woods. Uh yeah, it didn't follow super well and was not as well thought out as the portion that you played and that sounds pretty cool it does feel very um like classic fantasy which is awesome i haven't really played any classic fantasy dungeons and dragons as funny as that is to admit wow i didn't yeah. realize that Yep, A Tower at Trezar i think was the first classic fantasy dnd that i played well, I'm glad I was able to be part of it. That's cool. Yeah. Had you played like proper Dungeons and Dragons fifth edition rules before? I had. Um, the reason that I don't count it is that it was like a half hour session and it ended with my character dying. Um, so. Yeah, that. That one, I, I'm not, it's, it, it wasn't worth it. 43,000 gold on a day that the pigs were not working. Pretty good. We had that a ton of ancient fruit wine. Ancient fruit wine. Wow. Do we need another greenhouse? Is it possible to have another greenhouse? It is not. Okay. I think you can like get flower pots inside your house, maybe to grow stuff. Interesting. I think I just heard a ghostly oh. call. Does that, that mean anything? That was me whining about how it's raining again. Oh. Just kidding. I don't know. I think sometimes there's just real good ambient sounds in this game. Okay. I need to get us some more copper. 
Or I need to buy some more copper, I suppose. Yeah, we'll need it for um, more kegs at some point. What, I think it what would is be... your use case? Oh, uh, bombs. But I don't know. I mean, I'm not sure if it's more efficient to buy the resources or to try to get them from the mine. I think just buying them. I don't think we... Uh, we did the math at one point. I don't think we were ever going to get to a point where, like, we could harvest copper faster than we were spending it by um, using bombs in the mines. Excuse me. Um, unless you were going to, like, go farm monsters that drop copper. Yeah, which wasn't really what I was thinking. But I... Do you know what monsters drop copper off the top of your head? Um, actually, I don't remember if any do. Uh, they're, I was thinking of the ones that drop the cherry bombs on the first few levels, the duggies. Oh, yeah. They're like moles. Those aren't very fun to farm, though, because you don't see them unless they're attacking you. I would just say buy, buy the stuff. Okay. Oh, I need to remember to put ancient seeds in this or ancient fruit in the seed maker so that we can plant more ancient fruit. I'm planting lots of star fruit right now, though. That'll still be good. Opera. Um, I was... Got it. Sorry, go ahead. Nice. Um, before I started streaming, I told Jared I'd been watching some of the presidential debate tonight. Kamala Harris was debating Donald Trump. And uh, I just want to advocate for watching presidential debates, if you are interested. Um, I feel like it's a good opportunity for me to kind of question my social media news bubble that I'm in. Um... Every day I'm like reading articles about politics and feeling like I have a good sense of what's going on. But a debate is a good time to just kind of sit down and question that, make sure that you're hearing both sides. I think in this particular debate, one side is much, uh, <laughs> much more valid than the other. Um, probably to no surprise to anyone who's been paying attention. But it's still kind of, I don't know, validating a little bit to hear both sides out. And I learned some facts that I, I hadn't known previously, so I think it's important. Um, but also, not very pleasant, so don't uh, don't feel ashamed if you're not up for it or uh, anything like that. Yeah, we were talking about this a little bit before the stream, and, and uh, I guess it made me evaluate my the level of attention that I'm paying to the system right now and just I, I, I like to feel informed but I also like to feel like I've got good opinions and the, I think the our discussion about the presidential debate was interesting to me because it kind of illustrated to me that if I'm going to claim an opinion I need to I need to be aware of what's going on as much as I can be and uh, I've never been a big debate watcher because I look at it as kind of a political theater. But at the same time, if it's influencing people's opinions. Um, and it matters, even if it's more theater than policy. So I'm probably going to take a, a bit of time after this to watch at least a highlight reel and just get a sense of what was said and and what direction people are moving um so thanks for that berkeley yeah yeah let me know what you think
Oh, I got to do something fun today for the first time. I uh, commuted by scooter. And wow. when I told my coworkers, the first question that all of them had was, was it an electric scooter? Nope. Just a run of the mill, kick it with your foot scooter. That's so I, awesome. I, it was like a 20 minute scooter ride to the train station and then a 20 minute train ride to work. Um, yeah, it was fun. It was nice to like start the day off with some exercise. Most days I work from home, but um, occasionally I like go to work in the office, mostly for the social aspect. Um, and yeah, in the past I've walked to the train station and the scooter was definitely nicer and faster than that. That's awesome. That brings me a lot of memories of childhood spent out scootering or i don't know if you other 2000 or late 90s kids will remember this but the wave uh or the uh, I think, wave boarding yep wave boarding or there was uh a, a similar device called a ripstick that some kids yeah. had spent a lot of time on those during the summers and the, uh, uh sorry keep going Oh, uh, I was just going to say, you know, it was good exercise and it was maybe more interesting than walking because there was more movement and more, a more playful component to it. Mm -hmm. Cool thing about those, the Razor scooters, it was like the main brand of scooter that people think of. I, I looked online, and as far as I can remember, they're like the same price now that they were when I was a kid. Like 20 or 30 bucks for a Razor scooter. Really? I got one a little more expensive that had, just had larger wheels so that you can go over different terrain better. But, uh, yeah, they're inflation-proof, I think, is my theory. I did not realize they were that affordable. Yeah. That's pretty exciting yeah i got it because i was so i got a bike to commute and bikes are just so much maintenance i feel like i spend as much time patching holes in tires and stuff than i as i do actually riding it yeah so then i was thinking what's a uh more whimsical less maintenance way to uh commute obviously roller skates and so then i was reading online about commuting with roller skates and they were like if you're not an expert roller skater just get a scooter instead it's the <laughs> same same speed way cheaper quite a bit safer i think your family did a lot more roller skating than i did um because the only time that i really went roller skating was with you when we were roller skating <laughs> but uh I'm pretty sure if I tried to commute on roller skates today, I'd have two broken wrists before I made it five minutes from my house. I'm bad at that. I, yeah, I feel like I'm pretty good on roller skates, but uh, I've only ever done it indoor. I feel like dealing with gravel on the sidewalk or things like that would kind of make it a nightmare. So what's the distance to the train? You said it took you about 20 minutes. Was it mostly like sidewalks? Do you have trails, like paved paths that lead? Yeah, it's all paved. Um, I go through a park and there's like a, just like an asphalt trail along a river that takes me most of the way. And then I'm on sidewalk before and after that. I want to say it's like two miles total yeah nice and there's a there's a faster route as well but there's construction on it right now so like the sidewalk is all torn up so that's like the longer way that i'm going i think it'll be 10 or 15 minutes once that construction's done but then i won't be by the river so a less, have you considered yeah. putting on some 90s sitcom music and going through the construction site while filming it just to set the mood for a feel-good zany uh experience for your audience <laughs> I love that idea. I should maybe like turn my hat sideways as well. Yes. 
Yep. And if anything goes wrong, you, you, you just kind of make a funny face and then smile at the camera while shrugging really exaggerated. <laughs> uh, I guess to answer your question, no, I haven't thought of doing that. But, uh, maybe we'll try that next week. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. I, uh, I've been walking on my lunch breaks instead of eating lunch. Um, I'll pack like a big breakfast and then snack on it throughout the morning. Um, which is funny because it could be lunch food or breakfast food, depending on how I'm feeling, but <laughs> then I'll go walk during my lunch break. And I've noticed that it really helps me stay awake better in the afternoons. Um, to get nice. out and do some exercise. Whew, I tried to give a gift. I tried to give a bomb to Kent as a gift. I meant to oh, give him an apricot. Um, but I had bomb in my hand. And thankfully, I had already given him two gifts. So he... <laughs> Crisis. Yep. yep. Well, Kent's one of the people that will gift you a bomb in the mail. If, uh, if the affinity is right. Just, hey, return to sender. Here's a bomb. Yeah, that was our plan C for getting our first bomb for uh, this No Tools run. Berkeley, do we hang on to geodes? Are we still processing um, geodes? I think we'll want to finish the museum for perfection, so I would say, yeah, let's keep processing them until we finish the museum. Um, someone has done the math, and it's actually not a good financial decision to process your geodes. If you just sell them a as geodes, you get more money than the average of like the things you can get out <laughs> of a geode. That's pretty funny. Man, these pigs are killing me. I guess the rain is killing me. With the, the rain pigs. is killing. You got to say it with an Italian accent. Or maybe not. I don't know if I can do an Italian accent. I'm just, or may, like a New York Italian accent, you know, just like, hey, these, I can't do it. I'm not going to embarrass our audience by trying to produce these that These are meatballs. <laughs> They're falling out of the sky. <laughs> exactly. Did I say that right? What are you building over here, Robin? Because it sure looks a lot like a guillotine. It sure is still raining, too. Have we cursed ourselves? Ourselves? I guess we're not one collective entity. We could be. Let's make an LLC. SVTR LLC. Everything we do is now tax deductible. One time my uncle made an LLC just to buy a house. How'd that work out? I think well. Okay. He's he real good with business. I'm I'm still trying to figure out how that works. And you know, if it's worth it to try to save up and build new or just try to do things as cheaply as possible. I don't know. Living, buying a permanent living space is complicated. Mm -hmm. Megan says she never gets this much rain in Stardew, and she is an expert. Maybe it's your sunny disposition that keeps it from raining in your Stardew saves. Yeah. The sapling is invincible. Megan says it's because we're Oregonians. Yeah, true. 
I would love some rain right about now. It's been a long time since we had rain up here and weirdly summer ended and then it got really hot here. We were, we were doing like mid eighties for a couple weeks. And then this past week, I think we had three days above 90 and I know it's probably a lot hotter where you live, Berkeley, but not anymore. I feel like it's cooled down quite a bit. I'm a spring but... fall person. Mm -hmm. I'm actually so sad about these truffles that we're not getting. I know. Doesn't the weather realize that this is our income? We should apply for uh, pandemic small business loans to make up for we the should. lost business. I heard they just give those out to anyone. Yeah, you can do whatever you want with them. Surely this won't cause catastrophic inflation. No, no, it's the $2,000 checks to everyone that did that. Definitely that instead of the billions and billions of dollars that we gave out to businesses for mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. question mark purposes. <laughs> Whoa, we can walk behind the house. I don't think we could do that before the uh, 1.6 update. Oh, nice. I think they added another space. I could be wrong. Okay, I just put two ancient fruit in the seed maker and got back three seeds. I feel like that was a not great deal. Ooh, Megan says you can also move the house now. That's cool. Could we move it to, like, town and then sell the farm and just live like a normal person in town? Well, we need that pig income. Oh, yeah. Maybe they can all move into the mayor's house and Pierre's house. <laughs> Just you walk into the mayor's house and it's absolutely full of pigs. You can't even go in because it's so many pigs. And I like they say this. in unison, all animals are created equal. It's not an animal farm reference, Berkeley. It is. It was kind of half baked. I don't remember a ton about the book, but I do remember watching the, the film and thinking mm. that the old pig was quite frightening. Yeah. Yeah, that movie sure gives you the willies. How are these saplings so much more bomb proof than regular trees wonder if that was a 1.6 thing I don't know Yeah, this rain is so peaceful sounding. I know I've talked about this before, but the sound design on this game is really well done. Mm. And was it just Concerned Ape doing the sound design? Do you know? Yeah. Yeah, it was. What a talented individual. Did I talk about the book Blood, Sweat, and Pixels on stream? Uh, Not that I remember. Oh dear, what an oversight. I read a cool book called Blood, Sweat, and Pixels. It's like a non-fiction story about video game development. Um, got 10 different chapters and it covers 10 different video games. And the author interviewed a bunch of people that were involved with each of the games. And one of them is Stardew Valley. Uh, so yeah, it talks about Eric Barone and his process. And uh, um, it, that was the only like solo developer game in the book. Um, most of them are like AAA studios. 
anyway, it talked about some of the things that were easier with one person and the many, many things that were harder with one person. Yeah. Have you ever been interested in trying to put together a game for commercial purposes? Uh, definitely not for commercial purposes. I'd be interested in making one just on my own for myself. We've, we've talked about a concept that I have for one that I would like to make someday. But uh, yeah, yeah, not interested in the commercial aspect. Just as a creative exercise. I think it would be cool to to develop a game. I think it would be it could be fun to be a game developer. But I think my concern would be the marketing side of it. As with so many things, it doesn't matter how good your idea is if nobody knows that it exists. Mm -hmm. And how do you compete with people that have millions of dollars and decades of experience? Yeah, violence is the only answer. Oh. Cool. <laughs> Megan says, uh, it was just concerned about doing literally everything. And one chapter of the book is about Dragon Age Inquisition and explains why it's kind of a hot mess. <laughs> Uh, Megan and I think Susie, Susie Moo have been playing Dragon Age Inquisition. And it sounds like it was a really good game that has some parts that feel hastily thrown together. Not everyone is as much of a perfectionist as Concerned Ape. Was this made by the same people who put out Baldur's Gate, or is this a different studio? That's a different one. That's... Okay. um. Uh, Divinity is the other ones by Larian. Ah, okay. Who did Baldur's Gate. Yeah, Dragon Age is like a... It seems cool. I, I've bought it. I haven't uh, played it yet. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. So Dragon Age is like a... It's real time, but you can pause the combat at any time and like give all of your companions... Uh, instructions about what to do next so it's like kind of a cool mix where it is real time but there's elements that feel more turn based oh i just got a little pop-up that said i've got ideas to sleep on i wonder if that meant my uh combat leveled up what did you next fight says, a skeleton in the caves oh nice Meg says that emphasis on the hot from hot mess, but it's also a bit of a mess. And Bioware did Baldur's Gate 1 and 2. While well, Larian made Baldur's Gate 3. Meg says the only time you need to pause the combat is when your companions are dinguses and don't heal themselves. <laughs> Fallout. That's all I'm going to say about that. No, it's not. In Fallout. The companions will also often fight until they're downed, and then you have to go uh, heal them. If they're one of the ones that can be healed, I've been I've been rolling with uh, a robot named Kiri, and she was not able to be healed for a long time. Kiri was my favorite one that I ever ran into. Mm, nice. I I think Kiri and the mission to rescue Kiri, like when you first unlock the character, I thought that was so fascinating. Are you talking about the one in the vault or the one in Good Neighbor? In the vault. Okay. I liked that one. I, I just don't... love Fallout so much. It's <laughs> You got it for me as a gift about two years ago. And my first playthrough, I enjoyed it, but I've... This is now my third playthrough, and every time I feel like I've understood the game better and loved it more. I don't know if I've ever had an experience like that where I enjoyed the game so much more on a replay. Yeah, that, I've been blown away by just like how much you you have delved into it. I feel like that's one of those games where it's really easy to just have the surface level experience. Um. But if it catches your imagination, you know, then it can be much more. I, mm -hmm. And I think that, that that kind of is similar to, to Risk of Rain in that it is, there is a very shallow way to play the game. 
But then if you think about it, there's a lot more going on. So. Hmm. All right. Well, that is our time. Let's let's see if we get sun tomorrow so we can show off our work to the group. Cool. Oh yeah, level 8 combat. Nice. This is so sad getting these <laughs> pitiful daily earnings. Sun, 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 sun. We're running out of, uh, you know, once we hit the end of fall, then it's just zero. Do you think we should just, like, hibernate through winter? Just, like, repeatedly go to bed? It's fast oh, that would skip. be bad for your friendship points, actually. That's true. Look at this. You cleared out so much. This is great. We have so much room we now. New barn. Next time we can uh, go ask Marnie for many pigs. Huh. What's this house doing here? Wow. <laughs> there's, a, there's a kitchen and a fire. This is great. So much nicer than my house. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right everybody thanks for coming out and hanging out with us it's always fun um if you aren't already part of our discord you can join it we talk about books we talk about music we talk about games and sometimes there's a voice channel sometimes we actually do things there too live so if you feel so lonely you can feel even more lonely until those things happen and then you can feel less lonely but find that or the link to our youtube channel in the about section of our twitch page and click on the little link tree link and i'll take you where you need to go yep i've been jared he's been berkeley and we'll catch you next week. Bye. Bye.